Hello guys. Happy Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm not too sure about. I'm inside today. Is it a windy Wednesday? A Wednesday? Uh, still missing you. And big hugs. Good morning. <laughs> did you find any more? What animals did we learn about yesterday? Beginning with an R. Four syllables. Oviparous. Yeah, oviparous. Did you think of any more that we didn't sing about yesterday? If you did, let me know. Speaking of singing, have any of you got hot cross buns in your house? Lots of people buy hot cross buns to have on Easter time. Uh, we're going to sing about six current buns. Currants, another word for raisins. And if you've got hot cross buns, you'll see they're full of raisins. So it's another word for six hot cross buns. Actually, let's sing it. Six hot cross buns. Yes, we don't call them current buns. Okay. Okay, up on your feet again, and to warm our sleepy bodies, let's try the oldest exercise ever recorded in history. <laughs> and we still do it when we wake up in the morning to stretch. Ah, oh, give a good, good morning stretch, and you'll see when we do the oldest exercise in history recorded, um, that it's so similar. Okay, ready? Feet apart a little bit. And you're going to have your one hand pointing flat down. So that is horizontal to the floor, level with the floor. Push it down and then take your other arm and also put it horizontal to the sky and push it up. And now you're going to push one up and one down. Okay. Ooh. And then we're going to come back to... Namaste, our COVID-19 greeting, yeah. And then you're going to swap sides and push up with the other hand and down with the other hand. But you're going to hold your breath while we're pushing. Are you ready? Namaste. Are we ready? Deep breath in. Up. Hold your breath. To the middle and now the opposite side deep breath in well done right are we ready to be hot cross buns what shape are hot cross buns round like a circle we are going to have six there's number Six, <laughs> you remember your shirts, six hot cross buns in the baker's shop. I think we're only going to pick and pay. Some of you are ordering from the baker's shop online. But let, I don't know if pick and pay has got hot cross buns. I'm sure they have. Okay, so we were number six. Six current buns. Oh, sorry. Six hot cross buns in the baker's shop. Round and round with the cross on the top. Along came Benjamin with a five rand coin. Bought a current bun and took it right away. What number? Five hot cross buns in the baker's shop. Round and round with the cross on the top. Along came Stewie with the five rand coin. Bought a current bun and took it right away. Ha ha, number. Four, cut, four hot cross buns in the baker's shop. Round and round with the cross on the top. Along came Patrick with the five rand coin bought a current bun and took it right away. What number? Th 
three currant bun, uh, hot cross buns in the baker's shop. Round and round with the cross on the top. Along came Susanna with the five rand coin, bought a caravan and took it right away. Number two hot cross buns in the baker's shop. Round and round with the cross on the top. Along came Kelly with the five rand coin, bought a caravan and a hot cross bun and took it right away. One hot cross bun in the baker's shop, round and round with the cross on the top. Along came Reese with the five rand coin, bought a hot cross bun and took it right away. No hot cross buns in the baker's shop because we all ate them on Easter day. We're inside again today so we can carry on learning more about eggs. We're going to look inside the egg and see what they call or what the parts of the egg are called. This is an egg that hasn't been fertilized. If it was a chicken's egg, the rooster hasn't fertilized with the hen. I hope that's the right word. So there's no baby inside. It's just an egg. Outside is the shell. You know that part, the hard part. And this thin silver line in between the shell and the white is called the membrane. That's that very, you sometimes see it when you crack or when we've been baking, when we crack the eggs open, that really slimy see-through piece. That's the membrane. And then the white part of the egg is called the albumen. Albumen. Three syllables. And you, with the yellow is called the yolk. Shell membrane, albumin, and yolk. And let's look at this, some of the different sizes of the eggs and the different shapes as well. That's a robin's egg type of bird. We got the Cape Robin. He visits me every morning. That's a hen's egg. That's an ostrich egg. Crocodile's egg. The ostrich and the crocodile are about the same size, aren't they? Butterfly or moth's eggs. Tiny little things on a leaf. They've enlarged this picture, which means they've made it much, much bigger than it actually is in real size. Just so that we can see it. They're actually tiny. Frog's egg. They look like lots of little eyes, green alien eyes. That picture's also enlarged so that we can see what they look like. Spider's eggs, also made bigger, enlarged so we can see. Those look prickly, don't they? And ants' eggs, buried in the ground, also enlarged so we can see because they're also tiny. Think how small an ant is. Imagine how small his egg is. Okay. Let's think. What was the... Sh ah, he was ra round like a circle, oval like an egg. A pyramid is a triangle, a square is a box, and round and round in a spiral, Ooh, like a snail. And my heart says, I love you. Oh, hello, eggs. How did you guys get there? My goodness. Not one like yesterday. One, two, three, four, five, six of you. Shall I count backwards just to check I got that right? Six, five, four... Three, two, one, 
No eggs there, so that's a zero. Huh. Oh, you all look, oh, some of you are not looking too happy. So there's our oval shape for eggs. Let's see with our eggs if we can divide them in half. When you divide in half, it's the same on each side, equal. Let's go one, two, three. And on this side, one, two, three. That's the same, isn't it? One, two, three. One, two, three. Divide it in half. And then double it. We've got one, two, three eggs. Now we need to put the same to double it. So we'll add, I'll take my hand away, another one, two, three. It's the same. So we doubled it to make one, two, three, four, five, six little eggs. Are they happy little eggs or sad little eggs? Ha! I've got one happy egg. Hello. I've got one joyful, ecstatic looking egg. Hello. Egg number five. What's egg number four looking like? Ooh. <laughs> I've got a very cross looking egg. Number three. Will it see? Oh, I think he's a bit of a shy egg. Are you a shy egg? Like Daily B yesterday. What's number two egg? Oh, he's sad. Probably missing you guys. I know you played this with Jean-Marie. And what's number one egg? Oh, he looks a little bit worried. Eh? Nervous. Thinking of worrying things. Oh, dear. Well, what was that? I heard a tiny, tiny, tiny little happy voice singing and a not so very tiny, tiny voice grumbling. Where? It's you guys, the Loveses and the Grouches. Hello. Well, at least you look happy to see us. We can see how you feel. Not very happy. I can see you've been thinking of sad, bad thoughts. And you again are happy thinking of the good, happy things, eh? Um, yeah. I think, guys, the Loveses would like to show, remind the Grouches, because he should know by now, we talk about it so often. Let's remind him of how when you... Uh, think happy thoughts your life becomes a little bit happier and when you think grouchy thoughts it becomes a lot sadder let's find our book where did it up in you hiding it okay loves us where can we put you let's put this loves us on that side and grouches on my right it'll be your left loves on my left Love's on your right, and Grouch is on my right, on your left. Let's take a peek at our thoughts. Written by Larne Newland. What are thoughts? Can we see them? Can we smell them? Can we taste them? Can we hear them? We can't touch them. So what are thoughts? Those are your five senses. See, hear, smell, touch, and taste. Everything in the whole world started out by being a thought. If you're thinking of getting an ice cream first, you think of what it'll look like, where you can get it from. How are you going to put it in a bowl and the neck or in a cone? And the next thing, you've got your ice cream. You've sorted out your problem, your thought. Yep, everything started out by being a thought. So are thoughts real things? 
Our thoughts are like little invisible bricks and they can build happy lives. Yep, our thoughts are real things. But like these invisible bricks, they can also build sad lives. There are two different families of thoughts. The love family, happy fun thoughts. The loves build happy lives. They're full of love. And the grouch family, grumpy, complaining, miserable thoughts. The grouches build unhappy lives. No love in them at all. Where can we find thoughts, do you think? Growing on trees? Buried in the garden? In the post box? In the fridge? In the bin? Under the carpet? No, thoughts can be found in our brain, which is inside our head. The only way they can get in is through the door of our mind. And only we can let them open the door. Who chooses our thoughts? When one of the loveses pokes into our head, who lets it in? Is it my mom, my friends, or my TV game, computer games? We choose our thoughts. And when one of the grouches pops into my head, who let it in? My teacher, my pet. An alien, we choose our thoughts. Can you think about something really nice that happened? Let me close my eye. I will think of saying hello to you all every morning. We can think about anything we choose. Can you think about a not so nice thing that happened? Hmm. I can't today. It's been a good day. <laughs> ah, I had a lot of feathers to clean up and I was cross with Mr. Mac. It's up to us. We choose our thoughts. Love thoughts. Jenny gets a kiss. Whoopsie, sorry, loves us from her daddy. What is she thinking? Ah, oh, daddy loves me. I'm so happy. Is that a love or a grouch? It's a loveses. Love builds joyous and happy lives. Grouchy thoughts. Zach's tennis ball breaks the kitchen window. <gasps> What's he thinking? Oh no, I'm in trouble. I'm so frightened. What's daddy going to say? Is that a love or a grouch? Grouches build unhappy, miserable lives. Love thoughts usually knock and they easily knock. When you get a present, your mum and dad are proud of you, your teacher's proud of you, or you win a prize. It's easy to think a love thought when something nice happens. Grouch thoughts usually knock when your, oh, I don't know, your mommy's late. Or you miss the school bus, you forget to do your homework, or you spill your water all over the table. It's not easy to think a love thought when something not so nice happens. Can we let love thoughts in when we do things wrong? Or when things go wrong? Let's see. Your ball breaks the window, grouch knocks. Librian, you're in trouble. You've got problems. But remember, you can think about anything you choose. Keep the grouch out. Don't let him in. Instead, think about a love thought. Where are you? Instead, think about how to solve the problem. Ah, oh, hey, the window can be fixed. I can help dad or mom clean their car to get some money to buy a new one. And it was an accident. And I will say sorry. 
only love thoughts build wonderful lives. Think a love thought. Choosing loves when bad things happen is not easy, but you can do it. God made a beautiful world full of amazing things. Then he made lots and lots and lots and lots of us to live in this beautiful, great, big world. If we use love thoughts, we'll have the best lives ever. Which will you choose? Loveses are the best by far. Look, she's flicking the grouch away. <laughs> Well, I'm certainly going to practice not letting the grouches in today. The more I practice, the easier it'll get. I'll say goodbye with a poem about bird's eggs. It's by Robert Louis Stevenson, written also a long time ago, called Nest Eggs. Birds all the sunny day flutter and quarrel here in the arbour like tent of the laurel, here in the fork the brown nest is seated, four little blue eggs the mother keeps heated. While we stand watching her, staring like gabies, safe in each egg are the bird's little babies. Soon the frail eggs shall chip and upbringing make all the April woods merry with singing. Younger than we are, O oh children and frailer, soon in the blue air they'll be, sink, singer and tailor. We, so much older, taller and stronger, we shall look down on the birdies no longer. They shall go flying with musical speeches, high overhead in the tops of the beeches. In spite of our wisdom and sensible talking, we on our feet must go, plodding and walking. From the Loveses, where are you? Goodbye! And the Grouches, he's also going to practice thinking on the good things. Goodbye, my darlings. Love you madly. And I will... See you tomorrow. Bye.